Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the first video in 2023 and the next video in the restoration of this Grudig 2140. I got to the stage where I just basically needed to do the FM and the final cabinet restoration. My logic was eh, easy, just get on with it, do the FM alignment, the RF alignment, check the IF alignment, which we very seldom need to worry about with FM on these radios. Sometimes you do, but very seldom. And just, uh, you know, do a bit of uh, cabinet work. There's not much to do. Put this in, test it, show them, boring video. Okay, that's what I had in mind. <laughs> well, the uh, radio had a different idea for me. I had not really tested the FM properly. I mean, I switched it on at the beginning and I got all that noise and I got all that problem with the, with the uh, valves. So I left it to the end. And it's what I normally do, because when it gets to rest restoring the FM, really what I do is restore or change normally one or two capacitors because all the other caps, all the other things that need restoring or changing, especially capacitors, have been done during the restoration of the other pre preceding phases. So I get to the end, very blasé, switch on the FM. I started recording it. You'll see me. I want to show you what it sounds like, and then we're going to do the IF alignment. And nothing happens. Nothing bloody happens. And... My suspect was this guy over here, but I won't get into it. It just gave me a bit of a shock. Ultimately, it just made the uh, experience, my part of it at least, a lot more interesting because I had to do some fault finding after the panic. Messing with the FM front end is always a bit of a panic, always for me. It doesn't matter how many of them I do, and I've done a lot of them, it's still a little bit nerve wracking. But anyway, I'm going on too long. Enjoy the video. I've said before that there's usually method to my madness and uh, this again applies to the reason why I do this in the order that I do. In other words, power supply, amplifier, AM bands, and then FM. And the reason is that once you've done all that, once you've replaced all the capacitors that are related to all those circuits, really the only one that's outstanding or left over is this guy over here, which I've already replaced. It's the discriminator capacitor, 4.7 microfarads. The circuit calls for 5 microfarads, so that's fine. And that capacitor is the one that goes across the, uh, really across the two diodes on the EABC80. And that's also the most important point for us to measure. Now, if you see, I've put a bit of sleeving in there because I couldn't really get to the pin. So I cut the old cap over there and I did a pigtail thing and I put a bit of uh, sleeving on there, which I can pull back or pull in to cover that wire. Now, this capacitor is um, sort of reversed. In other words, the positive of this capacitor goes to ground, which is here on the center of that tube, and the negative goes to the pin because the voltage that's generated across there is actually a negative voltage. And it's also very important because it's a voltage that gives us an indication of the strength of the signal coming through. So we can use that for the alignment, and we will. But now that I've replaced this capacitor, let's see if we get anything. Here we go, FM. I've got an antenna in there, I've got the speaker connected, the volume up, connect FM, Why am I not getting anything? That tube is still dirty.
<laughs> well, that was a bit of a dampener, wasn't it? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. I got nothing, as you saw. I couldn't figure out what it was. So then I started with the obvious uh, suspects. I checked the tubes, made sure that they were all in. I replaced the ECC85 with one that I knew worked. In fact, it's a new tube and it made no difference. So I put the old one back. Then I went and tried something else. I took 10.7 uh, megahertz from the signal generator and I fed it to the input of the ECH81. I modulated that 10.7 megahertz with an audio tone and I could hear it perfectly well uh, coming out. I then wrapped that, uh, I put, I fed the 10.7 um, megahertz with a tone onto the end of that tube, try and get it through. That's how you normally adjust it. I could barely, barely hear it. And I was going to do all sorts of other stuff. And then I thought, let me try something else. I remembered that I had removed this guy. Remember, we removed this to change the, or to loosen this up. And I put a bit of force in there and I messed around with it. And I thought, I wonder if I didn't do something wrong in there. So I took it out and just happened to try it. When I removed the casing completely, this thing started sort of working. So I figured I must have shorted something out here when I, you know, when I forced that loose. Um, what I did do is I sprayed some stuff down there, but I did clean it out with contact cleaner, so it shouldn't have been the case. But anyway, what I did do is I blew in there and everything else, and then trying to put this thing back, and we can see I've got it shorted to ground, because this is obviously ground. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to get shocked. But... When I touch it, when I touch it to ground there, it just goes dead. But when I touch it to ground on the chassis, it's fine. So something is happening here with parasitic, also with uh, capacitances and inductances, parasitics, that is causing this thing to fail. It's sort of back. So I think what's happening is because of the capacitance that this thing causes when it gets close to those components, the oscillator is stopping. So I've got to check the oscillator adjustments. Now there should be a coil and a capacitor. I think that's the capacitor over there, that guy over there. So what I'm going to try and do is put this thing back. I don't think it's shorting anything. I don't think it's actually shorting because it stops when I actually just touch this to the ground. Try and get this thing back. See, it's just... It's something to do with parasitics. It's not something loose. But of course, this is chassis ground, and this is creating a shield on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and loosen that up and see if I can get that oscillation back. I think the first bet will be that capacitor. I'll just make sure that that's the right one. I'm going to, I've put the sleeve back. It's obviously touching, so it's shorting. And I've got the screwdriver, the ceramic or plastic screwdriver in the capacitor. Now, the reason I chose the capacitor is because it's the easiest one to turn at this point. No joy there so far. Let me try something here. Ah. 
It looks like the antenna signal is not getting in. I've got this connected to the antenna and I'm bringing it near the holes. Just the antenna, the FM antenna at the back here. When I put it there, very loud. Okay, so what was happening is the signal is not getting in here. Okay, I have to check what's happening with the antenna. There's that first coil. Let me do some investigating. Okay, this is getting curi curiouser and curiouser. You see that? Now, the an this um, coil over here is the, uh, the front end coil these two are the antenna wires and when I get this close to here that's working fine when I put it at the back almost nothing so I'll have to check underneath make sure that um, there isn't a break in the wire well that had me sweating for a while and after all it was as simple as the antenna wires had broken at the bottom there both of them I don't understand how some, for some reason it was either broken before or in my tampering in there they broke off the solder, the, the, the solder connection so I just redid that and now we've got FM back. And the usual suspects are there. Okay, good. Oh, okay, that was a bit of a, a sweat. Let me show you what I was supposed to be starting, okay? What I was supposed to be starting is we're going to do the IF alignment, and I want to do the IF alignment again only with a voltmeter. And the way to do that is you feed a signal, a 10.7 megahertz signal, lightly coupled to the ECC85 tube, okay? And what is supposed to happen, let me put this somewhere in the middle, Here's a place where we've got nothing. Put on the signal generator and you're supposed to couple it lightly. When they say lightly coupled, it means you don't actually connect it to a pin of the tube. But what you've got is the 10.7 megahertz IF frequency for FM coming in here, coming out of your signal generator. And you're supposed to lightly couple it to the tube. And the way I do it is I just wrapped some wires. There's a little coil that I've made here about five or six turns of wire and I put it around some tape so this will fit over the tube. This particular one is difficult because you can't really get to the uh, bottom of the tube so the signal is going to have to be stronger here. But what you do, just to see that it works, I'll show you. I've got the 10.7 megahertz. I've got an amplitude of, let's call it 10 millivolts RMS. I've got a modulated signal on there of one kilohertz. And I think you can hear it. To get it off this station. If I make that 50 millivolts RMS, you can certainly hear it. And that means that we are actually feeding, we are feeding the uh, carrier signal into there. At the moment, there is um, modulation, there's a tone on there. But what I'll be doing is just the carrier. So I'll take the tone off. And what we've got going in there is a 10.7 megahertz signal. A carrier signal and we can use that to align the IF and the way we determine whether the IF is aligned is again by putting a voltmeter in a specific place now in this particular case we're not going to measure the audio output yet we are going to measure the voltage across that capacitor that I replaced it's going to be a negative voltage and it is the more negative it is the better the alignment is that you've got so you you control the, um, the adjustment of the alignment by checking the voltage across there. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. Oh, I'm still, I'm still sweating a bit from that because when these things go wrong, they can be a pain. I was really worried. I was really worried. I don't like messing inside those things. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, now that the mystery of the uh, missing antenna connection is solved, let's get started with the IF alignment. First thing I do is the lightly coupling 
of the uh, signal to the tube. I'm just putting it over the top part that's exposed. You could try desolder the um, shield from the chassis itself, but I believe there are three connections of the shield because ideally you'd connect the, to the shield. But if we check the shield, you probably find that it's, no, it's, oh yeah, it is. It's connected to ground. So there's obviously a shield um, to ground solder pin in there, solder point. I don't want to bother with that. This is good enough to work. 10.7 megahertz coming out here, the amplitude. Let's try 40, I'm not sure what we need. I'm gonna put modulation on, a one kilohertz tone, FM modulation, just so that we can hear it at first when we switch this on, make sure that it's working correctly. It is actually going into the um, stepped attenuator, switch attenuator, but everything is off. The only thing that appears here will be a capacitor, a uh, DC blocking capacitor, which doesn't really matter because we're going straight into that coil. We're not actually injecting it into the radio. And from the instructions, we need to adjust A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, A, B, C, D, E, F is that guy there, and the bottom one, that one there, and the bottom one, and two on the side here of the, um, of the shield for the, on the front end. Okay, so let me get the voltmeter set up, and we'll see if we can hear the tone. So I'm going to measure negative DC voltage, but I'm going to leave the meter on positive DC. So I'm going to put that to a ground point, which I know that is. And I'm going to put this to that end of that capacitor, that little capacitor that I mentioned. I just need to shift the um, screen away, and I think we've got it. First thing we notice is this is giving us a negative voltage. So I'm going to put this to minus DC. I've got it on the 10 volt range. I'm going to put it up to the 2.5 volt range. And this is without a signal. Now, put the volume up, give it a signal. It's a weak signal, so we can see it's going in there. I'm just making sure that this thing is properly seated there. Yes, it is. I'm going to make the signal a little bit stronger. So I've given it a bit more amplitude. That's about halfway there. And now we can start adjusting. And I'm going to start at the end. Now, the one thing I need to do is I need to ensure that I don't mess with the last uh, coil. The last coil is B. It's on the underside of the second IF transformer. So first thing I'm going to do is take off the modulation. So we're measuring the strength of the carrier there. And I'm going to do A at the top here. Well, this is tough. Okay. That's just a small peak over there. That's done. Now I'm going to do C and D, which is on the first IF transformer. Now, because my hand is near the uh, signal coming in, it does change. You've got to, once you've settled down, once you've got your screwdriver in and you're not touching the uh, input signal, that's what you need to look for reference. Let's try now. There we go. We've got a bit more out of that one. Okay, now let's try the underside. I think it's as good as it's going to get. That stays like that. Now we've got to go to this side and do these two over here. It's got some wax in there. Not getting anything there. What I'm going to do is remove this lid and uh, clean the wax again. I'll get right back to you. Let's try now. Very little change on there. I'm not going to force it. Oh, we've got quite an improvement on that one. 
try that again. I'm not even sure that I'm at the bottom of this one. Okay. I think that's sort of a peak over there. You know what I'm afraid of, right? I'm afraid of breaking these cores again. And that, my friends, is it. We've done the IF alignment for the FM. As simple as that, one volt meter. Now, how do we, how do, we do the alignment of the last bit, the last um, core? That's the one that uh, balances the, uh, the ratio detector. Well, to do that, there's a lot of tricks to use, but the one I prefer is actually to measure the AM. So again, you've got to understand what you're doing. When you adjust that bottom core, that last core, which is the one that's feeding the uh, ratio detector, it's actually the main part of the ratio detector. You're balancing the, um, the cores and the diodes so that you get the best uh, FM de decoding going on there, but you also get the greatest AM rejection. And that means that if you take this tone, which is FM at the moment, and you make it an AM modulation, like that. Now I've got an AM tone. Let's call it one kilohertz just to stay the same. And I can now go to that core, and I got, I've got to, I can hear it, right? You can hear it. I can actually make it a bit stronger. I can go to that core, and I try to reduce that amplitude as much as possible, so that I get the, the lowest volume of that tone coming through. That means I'm getting the greatest AM rejection. That is usually the best spot to leave that, uh, that alignment to. Let's see if we can make a difference to it. Okay, this is a tough one. I'm going to use the volume of the tone. Now, obviously, what I can do is put an AM, uh, an AC voltmeter across here. I'm going to do it by ear and show you how to do it this way. We'll see if it makes any difference. We can hear a certain level of AM, of that AM tone. I can hear it going up, so it's not that way. Can you hear it go down? Now it's going up again. That seems to be where it's best nulled out. Now, this is definitely not a very scientific method. This is probably the crudest way of doing the balancing of the ratio detector. But I wanted to show you the simplest means of doing that alignment. And we've just really done it because I've used a voltmeter, that's it. And it doesn't have to be, as I said before, a Simpson, which uh, was kindly offered me by a subscriber that actually visited Madeira. It works fantastically and it's come in very useful. It can be any voltmeter, preferably a moving coil so that you can see the, uh, the meter move. But as I said, not necessary. The point is we've done this uh, IF alignment of the FM, which was already receiving. Remember, this thing was not completely dead. It was receiving. You could hear the tone. If you couldn't hear the tone, you'd probably need to get a bit fancier. You could go do a sweep alignment, which I've done on various uh, projects of mine before. You can go to town on this. You can check it with a different method. You can use two resistors that you use as the balancing circuit and with a microammeter. Uh, there's Again, I've done that a few times on some of my videos, if you want to go and look at that. If you're interested in seeing some of the various methods, just look at some of my uh, playlists and choose the, the video on the playlist that says FM Alignment. That's usually the, the only one that will interest you if you're doing this section of the, of the restoration. So yeah, let's, let's see what this thing sounds like. Okay, starting at the end here. 1 on 88.8, it's pretty much on there. This is at 9.3, so it's pretty much on there as well. And the other main one is here at 99. Yeah, it's there. Nothing unusual. 
And of course, there's nothing further up here because this goes to 100. So our FM is working. What a relief. Now, you may recall that I did mess with some of this alignment in here when I was trying to get what I thought was the oscillator back. So I'm going to go to the um, RF alignment section. And what it tells us to do is to set a signal at 91.5. And I've got to adjust A for a maximum. Now, I'm using my ELV FM signal generator, which is really cool. It's sending a signal at 91.5 megahertz. I'll put it at the back here. Just got a little wire at the top. It's acting as an antenna. Really, it's a little transmitter right now. I'm not even feeding it into the antenna itself. And I'm going to put this at 91.5 where they tell us to. I've got it. I'm picking it up at 92, almost 92. So 91.5 is about there. And I adjust A according to the instructions. find it first I'm chasing it as it were I adjust a bit and then I strengthen it with the adjuster Let's see where I am right now yep just a little bit more tiny bit more that would be it there's my strongest signal. So I've now perfectly adjusted A to 91.5. Then they tell us to set it to 88. So I go here. I've got a preset, I think, for 88. Yep, 88. Leave it again at the back there. Come down to 88. Bloody hell, it's, it's spot on. And the reason I'm hearing that station is because there is a station at 88. So I don't need to adjust anything, but if I did do, I'd have to adjust B. And B would be that top one over there. Okay. Then what do I do? Then I set this to 99.5. You can also use this with your PC, but... I don't use a PC, I use a Mac. The software comes for PC. So 99.5. Okay, put it at the back there. And now I tune to 99.5. Now this is the one where I may need to adjust something because this is that capacitor. Uh, it's a little bit off, it's on 99.3. That's 99.5 there. I'm going to make a small adjustment. This one here. Always a pain to find it. I think I have it. There we go, 99.5. Okay. Now D, D is that one there which wasn't changed at all, so I'm leaving it. And folks, we've basically completed our um, RF and IF alignment for the FM using one device, one multimeter, preferably, as I said, a moving coil one, and our ears, and of course, the signal generator. This is the part where you can't really get away from signal generator. I've told you before you can use stations. I would said you could do that with the AM. You can also do that with FM, and I've got one bit of good fortune here, and that is that I have a known station at 88 megahertz, which is down here, and I've got a known station at 99, 
which are fairly fairly strong. 99 is actually quite strong. So what you can do is that you can actually do the same thing as we did before, but the problem is trying to adjust with uh, a voice signal. You know, you, you've got voice coming out there. So the DC voltage that you're going to see on your, um, on your meter, if you're trying to adjust the IF, is going to be altering all the time. Again, nothing wrong with your ears. If you want to try it with your ears, hey, give it a go. If you hear the signal and you make adjustments and it sounds better, you know that you're aligning it better. If it sounds worse, just go back. This is not something that you need massive sets of equipment for. If you've watched my channel for some time, you'll know that for a long time I had no RF, um, FM RF signal generator. And then I got this guy. This was from ELV, ELV uh, magazine. They sponsored me. They sponsored me on the, on the video that I did for this. I was going to buy it and they said, well, we'll give it to you and just give us a review. And I have loved this thing since I got it. It's, you're not really supposed to use it with an antenna. You're supposed to connect it there. But I just put a little wire on there and it serves as a short range transmitter. Very short range, which is the whole idea. So I can use this to do the RF alignments and um, it works pretty well. I could actually also use this to do an IF alignment. Well, how would I do that? Well, I would set this to a frequency that's, that doesn't have any reception on the dial. I would set this to say 90 megahertz, okay? Then I, would, um, I wouldn't send a tone because you, you can adjust what you send on this thing. You can go down to audio and you can, I can't even see if I can remember it, stereo left, right, mono, stereo left, right. You can mute it. There we go. So what you'll get if you start sending a signal at 90 megahertz, for example, right? At 90 megahertz with a muted modulation, it means you've just got a carrier. Now, if you've just got a carrier and you set this to 90 over there, you've set this to 90, you set that to 90 over there, you will get a DC voltage on your meter, you know, being produced by, um, by, that, uh, by the, the, the ratio detector. So you can actually adjust the IF using a, an RF signal rather than a 10.7 megahertz signal. This is probably cheaper than the cheapest signal generators that you, that you can get to give you 10.7 megahertz. And it has the added advantage that it gives you uh, from 88 to 108 megahertz with modulation, with adjustable amplitude and all that jazz. So this is a possibility. You know, you've got to be creative when you don't have tons and tons of equipment or you don't want tons and tons of equipment. I was actually trying to explain to someone recently that this um, getting by, you know, with with a little few creative solutions is twofold. There are two reasons. One is I don't like spending a ton of money. OK. Uh, and he said to me, but, you know, it's not some of the stuff isn't really a ton of money. And I said to him, yeah, but I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't want excess equipment. I want the bare minimum that I use all the time. And as you can see, everything that I've got here, you 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 see quite often on my on my videos. That thing over there, perhaps you don't. It's just a DC supply that I built ages ago. And it's actually there because I sometimes need fixed voltages. Um, and this one is in use. But I don't need more than this. I don't need four power supplies, three oscilloscopes. And sometimes it just the challenge of getting uh, a solution from what you have is actually part of the fun of the hobby. And of course, it does mean that I don't end up having to dig into all sorts of budgets to buy more equipment. You can get by with bare minimums. I mean, people did. Some of the guys in the in the uh, in the era when this thing was being built, some of the techies that repaired this stuff had really the bare minimum equipment, and they got the job done. And sometimes that's what you need to do. So that brings us to the end of this video. And quite frankly, we are pretty close to the very very end. I'm not even sure. I haven't decided yet. I'm not even sure if I'm going to show another video doing the, the cabinet because there's very, very little wrong with the cabinet. I'll do the cabinet. If it's worth recording, I'll put a little video on and show you the result and do a final test. But really, the purpose of this uh, project was to show you how to do things with a bare minimum of equipment. It wasn't really to show you how well I can polish. And you all know that uh, if you want to see cabinet restorations, go and see Dave Tipton's videos, not mine. He is the master of the cabinet restoration work, the physical, the actual mechanics is, is absolutely amazing. So if you want to see that being done properly, go to the master. 
So for now, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you for your company. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, don't forget you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Links are at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.